unto Thee, O Lord, do we give thanks. To the house of Israel, giving all honor and praise to this true and living God, thanking God, the universal truth, the potentator of heaven, for continuing to renew his creation daily. I thank God for his patience, his love, and his mercy as we strive to fulfill in real time our purpose on these mundane shores. Remembering with great respect, unmeasurable appreciation, and unconditional love, our reestablisher, Prophet William Saunders Crowdy, who brought back the Ancient of Days. To our grand and noble leader, Chief Rabbi Philip E. McNeil, Grandfather Abraham, who is leading this army through what may be recorded as one of the most turbulent times in our global history. May God continue to bless and keep you is my prayer. To all of my many brothers and sisters, all hail. I want to thank Chief Rabbi for allowing me to have some reflections on God's seven day Sabbath as we remember his servant who gave his life so that we might live more abundantly. During this time of the year, as we heard during Sabbath school, there is a song that we sang that opened with the words, sometimes when I think about this prophet, William S. Crowdy, I do rejoice because I know this prophet came down from above. That composer understood the gift that God gave us. God in his infinite wisdom, understanding the frailties of the human condition and the consequences that are often the result of free will, ensured that we had clarity as to who he was, who we are, and our purpose in this spiritual army. The prophet didn't ask to come. He was sent. Born during a time in United States history when the black man was considered property, unable to contribute in any meaningful way to society, being denied any type of formal education to shape or inform his thinking, forced to abandon his home life twice, once in his youth and again in adulthood, working alone to drive an ideology that was foreign to the world, arrested 22 times, put on the docket to be hung, moving from city to city, from state to state, sending his spirit to the island of Jamaica, the Republic of Cuba, and the continent of Africa to establish houses of worship, not for himself, but for generations yet unborn. It is overwhelming evidence of God's hand and design on this man's life and God's desire for us to live a life of service. The prophet's cognitive structure and his physical stature were altered. They were tempered for divine use. My question for us today is, are we tempered for use? Do we even know what that means? When I think about the prophet's life and what he had to do for God to use him, I think about sacrifice, obedience, selflessness, and love. Are we tempered for use? As blessed a people as we are, are we working to fulfill our purpose or are we not? Do we think God sees us or does he not? I had an experience this week that I want to share with you. While the world was casting ballots 
to select the next president of the United States, I went to visit the birthplace of Prophet William Saunders Crowdy, some 40 plus miles outside of Washington, DC. I was accompanied by two guided angels to St. Mary's County, Maryland. As we approached the location, I observed how very winding and hilly the roads were. I saw the tobacco fields to my right, and I thought of the long days our people must have spent out there laboring. The road we were on was lined with trees on either side that stood 50 feet high, so high that you would get lost at night because there were no light posts. I thought about how many slaves must have run through those fields, running from or to something or someone. And it was through those trees that we were led to our first destination, the number seven river, where our ancestors who had been deprived of their freedom were moved into slavery by those waters. I stood there thinking how they must have felt. We watched the calmness of the waters. And as we spoke about the sacrifices of stalwart soldiers who are now watching us from the balcony of heaven, I noticed a black hawk hovering over us. God was using his creation. It was something particularly interesting about this black hawk. He made a wide circle over us, but he never made a sound. He wanted to be recognized for who he was. We got back into the van and drove to our next destination, which was a plantation. While it was unclear to me if this was the actual plantation where the prophet was born, it was very clear in my spirit that this plantation had witnessed the struggles of many slaves. It was truly unbelievable to me that in 2020, such rural areas still existed. And as we stood on that dusty road, talking about the prophet and thinking on where he may have been, could have stood, possibly walked, out of nowhere came a cool east wind. It brought a chill that was so strong it caused me to zip up my jacket. And as I looked up, that same black hawk that had met us at the water had now arrived on that plantation. It circled above us, never making a sound. It didn't want to disturb the conversation of the story being told, but it wanted us to know again that it was there. When I got home, I looked up the spiritual significance of a black hawk. Black hawks represent messengers of the spirit world. So seeing them means the universe wants you to learn a powerful lesson or to expand your knowledge and wisdom. Black hawks are a symbol of wisdom, intuition, spiritual awakening, and spiritual enlightenment. So in response to my earlier question to you, do do I think God sees us? The answer is yes. God was with us then, and he is right here with us now. We beg for the truth. We ask for signs, and many times those signs are right here in plain sight. We just have to open our eyes to see it. That experience touched me. It renewed me. It restored me. As I stood in St. Mary's County, Maryland, the birthplace where God breathed life into Prophet William Saunders Crowdy, I understood why he said, why he left on record, little children love ye one another, because we must continue to be the light unto the world. I pledge my allegiance one more time to uphold, uplift, and advance this great work given to us by God. 
I want to personally thank Brother Ronald Stewart for taking me on that journey. My sincere and fervent prayer as we celebrate 124 years of the coming and sending of Prophet William Saunders Crowdy is that we temper ourselves so that God can use us. Generations yet unborn are counting on us. I ask the House of Israel to please pray for me. Amen and amen. What a moving, moving message. What, what a moving message. And, and I know it moved St. Jason. But it, it lets me know, and lets you know, that God's Spirit, the same Spirit that brought Prophet William Saunders Crowdy to us, that same Spirit is with us today. The Lord, every, every now and then, the Lord will give you a sign. Now and then, He'll give you a sign. And of course, signs are for you. Now and then, He'll give you a sign just to encourage you and just to let you know that, I, that I'm still here. My spirit is still available. My power is still in effect. And, if, and, 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 and that type of feeling uh, keeps, you from, keeps you from worrying. Our former leader says, don't worry. You've you got to be concerned about things. You've got to be smart. You've got to be cautious. But don't let worry put you into a, a dysfunctional situation. So we thank the Lord for these very fine presentations commemorating the 124th anniversary of the reestablishment of our congregation. 124. One, two, four. What kind of a number is that? You, you numerologists, you, you can play with that. See, see, see the, <laughs> hey, you, you, you can't beat the Lord. <laughs> the Lord will give you a sign when you, even when you're not thinking about it. 